Well, welcome to a special edition of the Frankie Slauson Variety Show. Hello, I'm your host, Frankie Slauson. And uh, I know a lot of you were waiting to hear the interview that I was going to be doing here pretty soon with uh, Randy Jones, the guy who played the uh, cowboy of the village people. But that hasn't happened yet. And it's hard to say when it will happen. He's been kind of busy on tour or whatnot. So I figure, you know, just wait around, maybe see if I can get another interview while we're waiting for him. And you know what? Yes, I was able to do that. And it's, <laughs> it's very surprising how that just happened. But I had the chance, and this is a pre-recorded interview, obviously, but I hope you enjoy it, to interview, I think, one of the greatest guys, wrestlers anyway, you know, in WCW, WWE, you know, just anywhere. His name is Diamond Dallas Page. We all know him as DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. And uh, it was an exclusive interview. He called me all the way from L.A. We did a well, half an hour, 35 minute interview. But uh, this is going to probably fill the gap here with uh, the interview. Trying to make it within an hour. We'll see. Including commercials, illegal IDs, and then who knows, maybe some bonus stuff too. You never know what to expect here on the Frank Slauson Show. And uh, next week, I don't know what's on the schedule. If I can get another interview, we'll probably do that. But right now, tonight anyway, the focus is Diamond Dallas Page. So without further ado, the well, first thing I'm going to do before I play or the interview, I'm going to play you his original WCW theme song. That's a way to kick it off. And I know, DDP, you're listening right now, and I'm happy you are. And uh, all you online listeners that are listening tonight, and the people who are going to be listening on the internet, uh, when I put this on my MySpace page, and if you are not able to uh, listen to this interview uh, tonight, or if you want to hear it again, just go to my www.myspace.com slash Frankie Slauson, and uh, I'll be on there as well. Or googlevideo.com and type in Frankie Slauson or DDP under the uh, video tab. But uh, anyway, I will present to you my good friend, and a guy that I have more respect for now today than I probably ever did before, Diamond Dallas Page. Enjoy. So high five.
it's um, you know it's different. It's, it's not as explosive as the, as the diamond cutter because the diamond cutter came out of nowhere, yeah. and he, he doesn't do that with it, which is really the whole you know. That's what makes the move so over. <laughs> it comes out of nowhere. You know, yeah. That's why people love it. People love to be surprised. Yeah. So uh, in this scenario, you know, I think he's doing what he wants to do with it and just altered it and made it his own. But, you know, everybody takes a little twist and tries to make it their own. So that's, that's cool with me. Okay. Well, that's cool. See, I, I, I did not know that. I did not know that at all because I, I just thought because, you know, there's a lot of wrestlers. Even Bubba Ray Dudley at one time, uh, I don't know if he still uses it at all these Double cutter, so. <laughs> right. Well, at least she gave me props to call it a cutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, with your wrestling career, now, I, I read your bios because I know just about, I know everything there is to know about you, yet you really don't know much about me. Tell me if that sounds weird at all, huh? <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, uh, uh, read your, I went to Diamond Dallas page. Dot com and I went to your site and uh, read your biography because I knew that you were from Jersey and whatnot. Growing up, was wrestling always something you always wanted to do, or was it some other things you wanted to do? Well, growing up, wrestling was a passion. Being a kid, and I tried it when I was twenty, it didn't work out. Yeah. And uh, you know that stuff gets <laughs> that, that that fake stuff gets real real so <laughs> real fast. Yeah. Uh, and your body can't take the punishment. But I was a kid at the time, and I tried it, and it didn't work out. Uh, I was staying in the nightclub business, and I tried it again when I was 31, but not as a wrestler, as a manager. Okay. And uh, ended up getting picked up by the AWA, you know, which based, was based out of Minnesota at the time, and Las Vegas. And uh, I worked in, you know, in the smaller federations for three and a half years while I was still in the nightclub business. And then I finally got my opportunity at Ted Turner's... Uh, uh, TBS in uh, 1990, yeah. and I was 35 and I was 35 years old at the time. Yeah. And uh, I uh, I came in. They brought me as a manager and a color commentator. And five months in, they told me that I was overshadowing the talent. That uh, it wasn't my fault with the long blonde hair, the diamonds, the rap, the club. <laughs> People were paying attention to me, and not the wrestler. Yeah. So uh, they basically told me I could still be a color commentator. I was like, you know what? I'm going to become a wrestler. I was 35 and a half years old, and I, I just set my mind to it. I got an audio book coming out, yeah. um, an inspirational audio book, um, December 2nd in Sam's Club. So if anywhere near Sam's, go get it, check it out. But it's, it's called Own Your Life. And what I did was applied the same principles when I was 35 and a half to my wrestling career as I did when I did the nightclub business, uh, and it did the 10 different principles from, you know, applying SmackDown, as I call it. Yeah. Uh, and SmackDown as an acronym means specific, yeah. uh, setting goals, specific, measurable, achievable, compatible, and then K, keep it going, and then do it, own it, write it down now. That's what it makes you strike down. But that's how I set my goals. And, um, I've got this all on this audio tape, uh, it's racial tape called Own Your Life. But that's what I did back in 90, when I, 91, when I decided I'm going to become a wrestler. And everyone said it was crazy. They said it couldn't be done. But they were wrong. Yeah. Because if you apply, if you understand what the 10 principles are to owning your life, well, then anything's possible. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, that, that really... Uh a lot of people probably nowadays don't even look at that that way that you look at because you know uh, when I found out that you did your YRG stuff and and used that as a way of healing so to speak you know that really man I tell you that's just just like what you just said earlier about you know about owning your life and whatnot that's that's amazing we like I said before the interview uh, we do have a Sam's Club and that's in Grand Forks North Dakota so any of you other DDP fans besides myself. Go out there December 2nd, pick it up, because I'm sure uh, GDP would appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, what's really great about it, first of all, I mean, it's, it's you know, anything in Sam's is really cheap. Yeah. So it's a great yeah. price. I mean, it's like, I think it's $13.99, so make a great Christmas gift. Yeah. But also, it's in a box that's 14 by, by 24, and in it is not just this, the, the inspirational audio book. It also has the YRG, Yoga for Regular Guys, warm-up. Um, it was about 20 minutes, a little less, right around there, 20 minutes, just to get yourself, you know, uh, understanding what YRG is, because, 
you know, a lot of people say, God, I can't believe you're doing yoga. I say, well, me either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But, but I don't do yoga. I yeah. do a yoga-based program because YRG is yoga meets old-school calisthenics, push-ups, squats, crunches, done to your ability. You can alter it in any way that makes it more comfortable to you to you know, start to build that strength and conditioning. And so it's yoga meets old school calisthenics meets isometric and isokinetic movement, which means the engaging of muscles as you move them, and you wear a heart monitor. So you can see where your heart rate's at. Now, yeah. what the hell does that mean? Everyone does. When you go to any gym, you're going to see ellipticals, treadmill, stairmaster, bike. Yeah. Every one of those ones, when you get within your fat burning zone, which I'm sure no one in this program knows, so much <laughs> Take 180, less your age. Today, I'm 50. So 50 less 180 is 130. Now drop 20 clicks down to 110. And between 110 and 130 on my heart rate, if you're wearing a heart monitor, I'll know when I'm in my fat burning zone. So I don't have to work too hard. Or if I'm working too easy, I know to step it up. The bottom line is when you're on a Stairmaster, a treadmill, a elliptical, a bike, whatever, the only thing you are doing is burning fat. If you're in your zone, with YRG, you're getting the same cardiovascular workout or better, plus you are creating energy, flexibility, stability, because it's all about building core strength, and most importantly, longevity. It's all about holding back the hands of time. And with my workout, I don't even lift weights anymore. People are going, damn, God, can't. Yeah, first of all, they, they're blown away. They can't believe I'm 50. Yeah. I'm like 38 or 40, which is, yeah, which is complimentary. That's what you look. You actually look like you're still like in your mid 30s or whatnot. Yeah. But, but you know what? But I'm not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's because I take care of my body. I put the right foods in my body, and I still like to you know, have a steak and a beer and. You know, I still like to have a good time, but I also know how to moderate my body so I yeah. don't abuse it. And what I do is, because, you know, right now, Frankie, everybody's living to, like, 78, 80, yeah. 85, 88. But if you look at these old people, 99.9% of them not take care of themselves. So for the last 10, 15, 20 years of their life, they're in miserable pain. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> and I'm not thrown around like a rag doll. Yes. I am stronger today than I have ever been. Because, you see, we throw in push-ups in a lot of upper body work into YRG, which makes it totally different than yoga. And you got to understand that I was a guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga yeah. the first 42 years of my life. I just wouldn't be caught dead doing it. But it came as 1990, it was the end of 1998, and I was on top of the world. Yeah. And the doctors, I ruptured my L4 and L5 so badly that I was forced into, you know, into, you know, either trying something new or quitting wrestling. Yeah. And quitting in failure was not an option for me. Yeah. So I, I adapted. My mind had to become flexible before my body could. Three weeks later of doing this stuff called power yoga that I was doing at the time, uh, my body started to get more flexible, started to get stronger. Three months later, I was back in the ring. Yeah. Now, here's the real beauty of this whole thing. At 42, they said my wrestling career was over. At 43, <laughs> I was the heavyweight champion in the world. <laughs> so you can't tell me that adapting to the situation, which is one of the key principles in my 10 principles of how to own your life. You've got to be flexible to situations. You've got to be adaptable. Yeah. You've got, I mean, there's so many great things I talk about in this thing. And I've had some guys who, who do this for a living listen to it, and they're like, wow. Yeah. You've hit on something. Diff it's a different way to explain it. Because it's all the same things. Living with a positive attitude. You must believe to achieve. I mean, all those type of things, they've been said over and over in 16 different ways on Sunday. But they haven't been said the way I'm saying them right now. Because there's never been anyone like me who's been an inspirational speaker and a workout guru yeah. who has taken their body and honed their body to be in better shape at 50 than I was at 30. Uh -huh. Right now, Frankie, I, I, I do like doing push-ups. We go down, we go down for three seconds, we hold three feet off the ground for three seconds, and then you push up for three seconds, then you come down for three seconds, hold three seconds, then you go through it. Now, if you can't do that in a push-up, you're going to be lower to your knees. 
Yeah. I know you can do it in that spot. Yeah. Then from there you build to five. You build to ten. You see, that's from the uh, the, the ultimate warrior workout. Yeah. But for me, I'm past that. So I'm doing one arm push ups. <laughs> where I go down for three, hold for three, push up for three. Yeah. Come down for three, hold three, push up and down for three, hold for three, and then go to my movement. I build up to ten second one arm push ups. Huh. <laughs> that is that is something. That is wow. Yeah, and dude, it's it's I'm not showing off, I'm telling people what's possible yeah. with this. I don't know many guys that can do one arm push ups, never mind a three, five or ten second one arm push up. And I'm talking about all ages. Yeah. So. Well, I'm only 23, and uh, myself, you know, yeah, I, I probably need to get into the gym, too, a little bit. I, you know, I'm not saying I'm one of those people that let, let your body go, but, you know, it's just, I don't know, back in the day or, or you know, growing up, you know, or, you know, more skinnier, of course, back then, you know, and, you know, more energetic. Not that I'm not energetic now, but, you know, I don't know, you know. Maybe we need somebody like you to come over here to see Fairbairn. And have like a training session or whatnot. Get some of these overweight well, people. <laughs> even by being overweight, is I've got kids. I got a kid right now. Here's here's where the spectrum goes from people who are doing YRG. If you go to DiamondDallasPage dot com and look up some of the case studies, you took my buddy Smokey, who's two hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah, yeah. You know, six foot. I mean, excuse me, five foot nine. Never worked out a day in his life. Set a goal for himself using my how did you apply SmackDown? You know. Yeah. Um, and he said, go over yourself, he lose 50 pounds in 14 months, because he was 14 months from 50. Yeah. Well, seven months, three weeks into it, he lost 73 pounds and 58 inches. He's a different guy, but he's not just skinnier. He's stronger. He's yeah. healthier. He's more focused. Because that's one of the things about, I just got back from Iraq, where I did a tour of greeting the guys and taking pictures and yeah. getting the pictures with the world title belt, which I have, the world championship <laughs> belt. Um, World Championship title. Yeah. Just screw it up. Um, but not just that. Every night I did a workout with the guys. Yeah. And every night I had 30 to 80 guys in the gymnasium yeah. doing YRG with DDP. <laughs> and I stayed with them, worked out with them for an hour. Then we stayed afterwards, told some stories, took some more pictures, had some push-ups, 10-second push-up contests for T-shirts. It was phenomenal. I was there for two weeks. Oh. Um, so... The bottom line is, what I'm doing is I'm spreading the word and building, you know, the word of YRG uh, as a brand of a workout. You don't have to go to the gym. By the time you get in your car, drive to the gym, <laughs> go do the gym, yeah. do your workout, puddle around, get in your car, drive home, you just spend two, two and a half hours. Yeah. Well, fine. I've got like, this warm-up workout. This will start to get you stretched out. You'll be able to find out if you buy the, if you go to Sam's on December second and you get the uh, YRG, uh, excuse me, if you get the Own Your Life yeah. uh, uh, audio book, inspirational audio book, you'll get a twenty minute warm up of YRG, and you'll get to see you know, all the back end stuff, you know, and you're gonna you're gonna sweat your butt off for twenty minutes, okay? <laughs> but if you really get it and you get to go to DiamondDallasPage.com. And you get the, you know, the the, uh, the the whole three, which is you know, the twenty minutes to warm up, the, you know, the uh, the fat burner plus. Uh, these workouts are killer, but there's also people who are fifty plus. Like Smokey could not do the regular guy workouts, so I developed YRG fifty plus, fifty years, fifty plus years, fifty yeah. plus pounds. And then of course there's a the pound of youth. I mean, which none of your listeners are a pound of youth people, which is fifty six <laughs> seventy. Yeah. So, bottom line is, man, I'm just recreating. I'm constantly reinventing Diamond Dallas Page, which is another one of the ten principles. Well, that's cool. I mean, that, I uh, after this weekend, after you confirmed and uh, your PR guy confirmed that it was okay to do this interview with you, I went. To, uh, I, I looked you up on Di or on MySpace.com. I found some videos on here, obviously, and uh, I, I see the uh, testimonial of the uh, Larry or Smokey uh, his, uh, testimonial, and I thought that was pretty damn impressive, you know. Yeah, it is. It's very impressive, and he's you know, it's a just show. I mean, I always say I'm a regular guy, but people say, "Man, come on, you're a three-time world champion. Yeah. You're a regular guy." But I am a regular guy. I was yeah. just like everybody else saying, "You know what? I'm going to go do this." And yeah. Failure is not an option. What? And like I say, I apply my ten principles yeah. that I always have. 
that's like coming out here to Hollywood. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were like, you know, you, know you, you, you trapped lightning in a bottle the first time. The odds of you doing that twice are going to be astronomical. Yeah. And I was like, I think you're wrong. <laughs> and because I know how I did it. Yeah. So, you know, long story short is, you know, if you do understand what the principles are to owning your then, you know, at least some of your goals are absolutely possible. Really, anything's possible yeah. if you were to, you know, follow it and just never let it go. <laughs> you know, some people have limitations, yeah. but in the big picture, you, your only limitations are yourself. Now, let me ask you this question, now, <clears throat> before we move on to another subject here. Uh, when you do your YRG works out, do you ever listen to any music at all while you do it to pump you up at all, or what's your style on that? For me, I, like, I, I know the workout inside and out, so yeah. I don't have to listen to anybody. I've always got either country or rock or, you know, party music. I've always got something going. Okay. If I'm by myself, if I'm teaching somebody, I'll just put it on low so I have some, like, low-bed music in the background, yeah. Yeah. Um, which, um, you know, is really... Uh, um, you know, it's, you know, I enjoy that, but I don't need the music. You okay. know? What I'm going to do now, too, also, is once people get it, I want to put out audio books. Yeah. I mean, like, not audio books, but audio, like uh, iPod. So you yeah. Can, once you know the workout, then you can just get taken through it, put your own music on the back of it if you want that, but then you'll know the exercises. Some yeah. people need that little, I think you being a trainer. I've got people all over the country doing this thing. It's really amazing. Yeah. And I'm doing it at the grassroots. I'm about to do an infomercial on it. And uh, and blow it up big for change the world. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. Well, that takes care of the YRG portion of the interview, and I, you know, and uh, now the next, uh, you know, because I said I had a lot of questions regarding wrestling, YRG movies, and a lot of stuff. Uh, now this this goes back to well, not so so long ago, but uh, about maybe a month or so ago. Uh, because I am a big still today a wrestling fan. I've been a wrestling fan for about 16 years. And uh, I've never been to a live event yet, but it's only, you know, because, you know, where I'm at, it's kind of hard to get, you know, somewhere sometimes. But anyway, uh, I was going to mention about uh, Eric Bischoff. Now, I know you probably have answered many que or this question before, but I'm going to ask you because I've never asked this. He uh, it just came out with a book, Controversy mm -hmm. Creates Cash, and uh, he did, like, a four-part interview with JBL uh, on WWE.com. And I, I listened very carefully to that interview, uh, and he mentioned, and I know you uh, said a little feedback on your MySpace page uh, about the fact that you and Eric Bischoff were, like, best friends. Like, when WCW, uh, before it went under, you know, when WCW was still up and running, and he would have, like, you, Eric Bischoff would have you or Kevin Nash or whatever or somebody come in and uh, do more of the uh, creative control, so to speak. He said that, uh, maybe I'm saying this wrong, but from what I got, I mean, anyway, he said that uh, he could trust you more than he could trust himself. Now, do you want to explain somewhat what he meant by that, or, you know? I don't think he actually said that. Or, or something like that, anyway. You know, what the bottom line is, he, he, was, he was talking about my character. Okay. And JBL, you know, he, he his, his, his character, meaning his one on television yeah. was is someone who's is, 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 is a bit of a jerk off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just that's what he plays. Okay. But in, you know, in real life, he also likes to stir the pot. Yeah. So we tried to you know, create some controversy with me and Eric, and Eric basically said, you have to understand, there's, you know, there's people who are loyal, and then there's people that I trust. Yeah. I mean, I trust them. And what he said is he trusted me with his life. Yeah, that's he, what I kind of meant, yeah. Yeah, me, well, he meant that, you know, Eric and I had a relationship that, first of all, that's who I am. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy, if I tell you I'm going to be there on Sunday, I'm there. If I tell you, you know, I'm going to drive 400 miles to get there, or I'm going to be in wherever I'm going to be, unless you change it, I'm the kind of guy you can count on to be there yeah. 200%. And that's what he meant, not just not just count on, but trust with his family. And that's like the greatest compliment anybody could ever give somebody. So... You know, um, that's all Eric was basically so, saying. So you can basically say that you guys are like brothers in a way, kind of. We were for a long time there. We lived right near the club, but we started at Bottom Guys together. Yeah. We, we, we were nobodies. Yeah. Bada bing. Bada boom. Bada yeah!
and, you know, like I said, I probably said it the wrong way, but it, it's been a while since I've seen the interview. I, obviously, you must have seen the interview, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Uh-huh. And, uh... Now, this brings you up to another subject now. Uh, in your wrestling career, from the time that you started out till your WWE days and even your TMA days, uh, you've had a lot of feuds with uh, many different people. I mean, I could, I could list every superstar just by how they're possibly I remember way back when, of course, I've been to Sturgis, South Dakota a few times because they have family down there, whatever. Uh, back in, what was it, 98, I believe? I think it was 98. It was you and Jay Leno against Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff at that time. Yep. <laughs> You've had a lot of feuds now. Uh, if you, in your mind, who who was your favorite person to have a feud with or wrestle with? Well, Randy, without question, Randy Savage. Yeah. Because Randy, you know, he was he brought over intensity. And he's also the guy who moved moved me up to the next level. And when he took the diamond cutter. You know, in the middle, at the end of the pay per view in the main event, place went insane. But it was really my feud with the NWO. Yeah. That was a lot of fun because it was the entire NWO. It was me against the NWO. And I enjoyed wrestling against the whole Ravens flock, too. Yeah. Against Ravens flock it was exciting. And those guys took 10 different diamond cutters, and the place would go nuts. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Randy Savage streets were very, they were very physical. They were very brutal. It was a few of the year in 97. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like that at all. Did you ever uh, enjoy wrestling with Eddie Guerrero at all? I loved to wrestle with Eddie. Eddie was a transitional guy for me that made people go, wow, that, that, that guy really can wrestle. It's, it's not just Eddie. Yeah. You know? and Eddie's great with everybody. He, he, was, he was a phenomenon. Eddie did the greatest diamond cutter ever. Yeah. Out of a power bomb. Uh, but uh, he was he, he was one of the most greatest gifted athletes. I was so glad to see he finally he finally got everything he deserved yeah. towards the end of his career. Just you know, it's a shame it didn't last longer. That's all. Yeah, I mean, it, it really did. I mean, it, I think well, it's been a year now since it, uh, since he passed away, and it, it really sucks too. The fact that you know, it, it sucks just the fact that you know he's a guy that basically now or even last year he was in the prime of his career. He could have been another. He could have won another championship. And I think he was actually on that roll real close because I'm sure, actually, the match that they were going to have uh, in, in Minneapolis about a year ago would have been a triple threat match between uh, Batista, Randy Orton, and Eddie Guerrero for the heavyweight championship. And I think Eddie Guerrero would have probably won that championship at that time. Well, you never know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to back to you. And uh, like I said, man, I, you know, this is, I've been, ever since I found out that I was able to talk to you this weekend, uh, it, this has been like a dream come true. I never thought in a million years that I'd ever be talking to DDP, you know? <laughs> it is very weird because uh, I'm just a regular guy just like yourself, and uh, I, uh, I've i been doing this radio thing for a little while now, and I've, I've uh, interviewed a guy that uh, uh, you probably know, uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. He was the first guy I ever interviewed. And back, uh, and this leads to another question, because I know you've been asked this many times, uh, in 1990, WrestleMania 6, of course, back in the Toronto Sky Dome, you uh, let them use your car or the pink Cadillac yep. or whatever, and you were the, you were driving it, right? Yeah, well, that was my first. That was my first WWF appearance. So, okay. You know, that was uh, it's pretty wild. How and did the next time I was in the same okay. position, I was wrestling Christian. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know, I, wrestling for 68,000 people, so it was pretty cool. How did it feel, though, I mean, to come back after so many years? to the Sky Dome, and then, you know, 
that actually just to have the chance to wrestle there, you know. Um, it was great only because I only because I got to wrestle with a guy like Christian. Yeah. Because uh, Christian is, is is a phenomenal talent, and he loved playing the bad guy. Yeah. And we had great chemistry together. I mean, that, that, if you look at those matches, that was one of the top three matches on that card. Yeah. You know, as far as the people being into the show. Yeah. So uh, it, it, that was one of my last. In fact, that was my last big match I had before I retired from WWE. Yeah, yeah, that was. And uh, uh, another another question that I was going to mention to you now. There's been a lot of you know hater players, so to speak, uh, you know about wrestling. They'll they always you know even a few people I was talking to after I told them I was going to interview you. Uh, said, you know, wrestling's fake. There's no real wrestling or whatever. And I and I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not like a crazy, crazy intense fan where, you know, I'm gonna, you know, get all nutty about everything. But, uh, you know, there is some real life to wrestling. Obviously, you guys work out. You work your asses out, actually. Basically, you're touring. You're on the road nonstop. Uh, you had many injuries in your career. Uh, to to say to people or to prove to people how real wrestling can be. Would you mind sharing some of the injuries that you had while wrestling? Yeah, you know, but anybody who's listening, just fall off your chair. Just fall off your chair. It's only about a foot. Yeah. To the ground. <clears throat> Tell me what happens. Yeah. Does it hurt? Now try falling four feet, five feet, 15 feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it hurts. You can't fake gravity. Yeah. Uh, the wear and tear in your body uh, eventually will give way because we're human beings. We're not cyborgs. Yeah. But the amount of abuse your body can get used to taking is crazy. But at some point it comes up to you. That's why I do YRG, and that's why I started to have to do that YRG workout because I had to get my body because as it gets, it gets pounded and pounded and pounded, you get, and just, by sitting at a computer, you get less and less and less and less flexible. Yeah. Flexibility is you. In wrestling, you get pounded, you get flexible, less flexible, and you get stiff. <laughs> so you're less flexible and stiff. So the bottom line is, eventually you're going to tear something. I tore both rotator cups in my shoulders, yeah. both of them, and I've, I've operated on both shoulders. I tore my meniscus in my left knee, which means I, I, I couldn't walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they, they had to scope that out. Then I had ruptured my L4 and L5 in my lower back and my the two discs in the lowest part of your back, which enables you from enables you from bending over. Yeah. So I had three doctors telling my wrestling career was over. It was why it was yoga first, but yeah. then what would become YRG that gave me back my flexibility in you. And in my neck, I have five, six, and seven. That's what put me out of the WWE in a sense because it was too dangerous yeah. to wrestle. And maybe take a big bump and, and become a quadriplegic. You yeah. want to take a chance. You wanted me to become a color commentator, but I just didn't, you know, that I just wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. Yeah. And um, long story short is that all those injuries came from wrestling over a period of time. So uh, your body does take go through a lot of abuse. And, you know, you see these guys falling from all these heights, taking these falls. People think it's like, oh, what do they think? There's a little... Uh, um, Sad show. Not even that. You, you, they think it's a uh, like a you know Star Trek like there's a, like there's a barrier around. The oh yeah, yeah. Slow down before we hit it. You go boom. Yeah. You can't fake gravity, and it's predetermined. You don't win anything. You get awarded stuff. Yeah. Okay. You get just like you don't win the Grammy. Yeah. You get awarded the Grammy. Yeah. You get awarded the Oscar. You don't win it. It's like when it's, no. it's like when it's your time or it's your moment. And you know it's your moment that this is your time to finally earn everything that you work your ass off to get. Right, but if you don't work your ass off, you don't get there. Some guys get there without working their ass off, but yeah. you know they're few and far between. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that, I'm, I'm glad you 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 mentioned that because uh, I'm glad you uh, were kind enough to share your interest because there are a lot of people that there there are true intense fans. And, and that know a lot about the business, obviously, even though they've never wrestled a match. I've never wrestled a match myself, but I know everything there is to know about the business as far as history and whatever. And I have nothing but respect for the history. Wrestling, you know, is, is a is a form of art, and and that's all it is. It's a competition. Well, you, you, just, you just nailed it. That is exactly what it is. It's yeah. an art form. And how do you get the people to care? Yeah. That's another... One of my ten principles in Own Your Life, the audio book. How do you get people to care? 
You know, how do you get people to want to get the best of you? Like, when I walk through that curtain and there's 20,000, 25, 60,000 people, I know that they know. Yeah. And they know that I know. That I know that they know that I know. That me <laughs> and my partner both know yeah. who's going to win before we go out there. How do you make them care? Yeah. You know, you know, and, that, and that's that's really what it's developing a character people believe in. Yeah. And Derek Bishop said, you know, I believe in him, not what he said more himself, because he said, I trust him in my life. Yeah. And that's character, like real character. So when, when, with my career, when beginning, when I wasn't over for all those years, it was because Diamond Dow, Paige Joseph Falkenberg, which yeah. is my real name, God given name, now my real name is Dallas Page. Yeah. But, I changed it like John Wayne did. Yeah. But um, my when Paige Joseph Falkenberg was trying so hard to become this bigger than life persona, Diamond Dallas Page, the people never really got with it. I couldn't connect with them. But the instant that Diamond Dallas Page started to take on the characteristics of Paige Joseph Falkenberg, boom. Yeah. My career took off like a rocket. Yeah. And now that was I was I was forty years old. Yeah. You were like the oldest rookie, I, I believe. Ever. Ever. And, uh, and I'm, I'm the oldest crowned champion ever. Yeah. For first timer. That's pretty amazing. That's, uh, yeah. That's so, I mean, uh, there's so many things that Diamond Dallas Page did as a wrestler yeah. that, you know, can only be duplicated. It yeah. can't be first time. I was the only guy to lose the title one night and win it back in the same night. Yeah. I was the oldest rookie ever to come in and become a world champion. The oldest date is 43. Yeah. Now, a guy can come in at, at, at 38 years old, uh, so no one knows how old Batista is. I really have no idea. But yeah. I know that at, he was only up there for two years. He was a world champion. Yeah. See, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. No, nobody else paid, you know, paid their dues the way Tom and Dallas Page did. Yeah. But that's work ethic. You know, and, and belief in yourself and that failure is not an option. So, I mean, that's what owning your life is all about. All right, and uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Diamond Dallas Page, for taking the time to uh, talk to me. And uh, one last thing I want you to do, and this is something I always have everybody do, is give me a station ID. Say who you are, who you're listening to, and what station you're listening to. Okay, I have to know the station, Frankie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, it's uh, Pioneer 9.1. Pioneer 94.1? 90.1. Nine, 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 90.1. Yeah. 90.1. Yeah. Pioneer? Pioneer 9.1. So whenever you're ready, man. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. monkey. It's me, D-D-P, Diamond Dallas Page, and you're listening to the Pioneer 90.1. And my main man, the man with the plan, Frankie, so don't touch that dial or you will feel the <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I want to thank you and... Uh, you know, if I ever if I ever have a chance to meet you, man, I tell you, it will be just a thrill. And I was going to say, too, uh, before I let you go, is there a possibility, if I give you my address to your MySpace page or send it to your PR guy, that you could send me an autograph pic or something? Sure. Okay, cool. All right, we will talk to you hopefully again. All right, buddy, get that, get that audio book and be, put that on your date to prom- promo that around that time. Sure, I can do that. Uh, all right, man. All right, See ya. bye. And that was Diamond Dallas Page, one of the legendary guys, a legend in his own right, and a guy that I'm honored to finally say I've had the chance to talk to. Uh, Words can't explain how I feel right now. And it just goes to show that if you work hard, just like he said, but you like what I'm doing, if you work hard, you know, work hard at what you're doing and believe in what you're doing, anything's possible. Well... For Frankie Slauson, we'll see you next week. Hopefully we'll do the interview with Randy Jones. Hopefully it will be the next thing, but who knows. i got another interview lined up. Ormond Grimsby will be on the show here pretty soon. He's the, uh, from around in North Carolina. He's Mike Matthews' friend. And, uh, or, I don't know, close friend, whatever. Pretty close friend. And, uh, I tell you this, you know, like I said, it's unbelievable. Words can't explain it. Up next, we've got Brad, and I hope you enjoy his show. But for Frankie Slauson and Diamond Dallas Page, we'll see you next week for another installment of The Frankie Slauson Show on Pioneer 90.1.
Take care. God bless.